In this video, we will discuss importing tabular data to Maple. This will include a discussion of supported file formats, a couple of commands which support importing data, and finally, the search mechanism for searching through online and built-in data sources. Maple supports many different import and export file formats, including CSV, TSV, Excel files, ODS, and more. To see a full list of supported formats, see the question mark formats help page. Many commands support importing data files directly from files stored on disk or online. In this video, we will discuss the import, import matrix, Excel tools import, read data, and scanf commands. The import command provides a generic mechanism for importing data in various file formats. The source data can be an external file, URL, string, or byte array in the current session. The form which the imported data takes in Maple is determined by the format. This is either automatically inferred or explicitly specified using the format option. By default, import returns a data frame object when importing from the following rectangular formats, Excel, CSV, DIF, or TSV. Additionally, import returns a data series object by default when importing from the SXC or TSV formats. Let's walk through a couple of examples of using the import command. In the first example, we will import comma-separated tabular data as a data frame. The import command is pretty straightforward. As a first argument, you give a string that specifies your file path. If you're loading any data from Maple's data directory, for example, we can use the base option to explicitly state that we want to pull files from Maple's data directory. Pressing return here imports the data as a new data frame, which we can see has the following column labels. In this case, we have no row labels, so we are just defaulting to using numeric values. Let's see another example of using the import command. So in this example, we're going to input data directly from an input string while specifying the CSV format. So first we enter in our data, and we can see here that this is data for city and population, for a small collection of cities and populations. So for this example, we'll use the import command again. We're going to import city data. We'll specify source equals direct. And we'll also specify that the format here is CSV, so we are separating our data by commas. Pressing return, we'll bring this back into Maple as a new data series, where we can see the column labels as well as row labels. The next command I wanted to discuss was the import matrix command. It can be used to import tabular data, but it stores data usually as either a vector or a matrix. Now, as opposed to the import command, the import matrix command assumes that the incoming data is tabular, and it cannot be used to import images or other file types. So let's walk through a quick example here. So we'll import a MATLAB ASCII data file with the entries format. The first command here we're going to use is the file tools join path command. We'll notice it actually has the same base equals data drawer option as we used with the import command. So we'll use that to construct the file path to this MATLAB data file. And we'll see as we do that, we get back C colon slash program files, maple 2017, data, example, matlabdata.txt. So this is where our data file is stored on disk. Import matrix is similar to the import command. As a first argument, we give it the location of the file on disk. But then we specify some of the information about our data. So we source here is going to be from MATLAB, format equals entries, and transpose equals true. So this brings in our data. It stores it as a new matrix in Maple. Once you've imported the matrix, you can double click on this summary format in order to bring up the matrix browser, which allows you to go through and browse through all the information that you've imported. This is a good way of checking the top or the bottom of your file to make sure the data is consistent. All right, the Excel tools import command. So this one was specially designed to work with Excel spreadsheet files. And what this gives you is a mechanism to import full spreadsheets or specific ranges of cells stored in Excel spreadsheets. So we'll start off here again by specifying our file paths. We'll do file tools join path of Excel experimental data. Base again equals data directory to bring it from Maple's data files. So after constructing the file path, we will just use Excel tools import 
And this is similar to our other import commands. We first just specify the file path as its only argument. And this will bring in all the information that it finds within the first sheet in the Excel spreadsheet. We can again double click on this to see the information. It is also possible to import information in other spreadsheets in the file as well as specify cell ranges. So let's do Excel tools import again of the same Excel file, but we want to pull information from sheet two as well as the range A2 to B12. This brings in a subset of information from that existing spreadsheet. The final commands I wanted to introduce are read data and scanf. We won't give you an example for read data, but the read data command reads in numeric data from a text file into Maple. The data stored in the file must consist of integers or floating point values arranged in columns, separated by white space, and it is returned to Maple as a list or a list of lists. The scanf command allows you to read from the terminal using a specified format. The formatting information is provided by a format string. The scanf command below reads in an integer, a space, a character, and then a floating point value, all from the string that's given as a first argument. Several format codes are available for use with scanf. A few of the more commonly used ones are mentioned here. So D is integer, F is floating point number, C is character, S is string, and A is a Maple expression. In the final section, we will discuss ways to search for more data from within Maple. The Dataset Search Assistant is an interactive graphical interface for searching built-in and online data sources. It is possible to search for available data sources from directly inside of Maple's search box. To do so, we can type in something like gold, and right near the bottom of the results, we'll see data sets are added. These correspond to both online as well as built-in data information. Another way to access the data set search is by using the advanced search tool. To access it, we go to Tools, Assistance, Dataset Search. Here we can type in a search string, something like world population, hit the search key, and get back pages and pages of results containing various data sets. You can click on different entries in the list in order to see more details on the various data sets available. You can also change the sampling frequency as well as start or end date of your data. And when you're working with this, your data set is always assigned to a local variable named DS. If we enter DS into our Maple worksheet, this actually corresponds to the data set that we've selected within our advanced search. If you right click on the data set, there are a number of different options available from the context menu. Most frequently, you want to visualize your information by selecting the plot option.